three questions, provide, you know, uh, let the panel respond, and then, uh, and then we'll take another set of, of three. Um, so let's see, Arvin, where did you go? There it is. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's start. Do we have? Okay. Uh, okay. We'll go start here. Ah, yes. Uh, we need to get a microphone. I thank you. Yeah, there are logistics. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Matthew Powell from uh, Policy Management. Um, I like so principally well about principally about what uh, uh, organs and um, so I was very pleased to hear you say um, you were, were 1993 uh, GDP data was a reliable point I was there when they and <laughs> I um, I, I could talk about this for hours, but I won't. Oh, but please don't. <laughs> yes. yes. So, just a quick question. Um, you're, well, the, the point. The um, uh, what I like to say is, I think that anybody who'd done what you have done would have come up with similar conclusions, and that the, there are a whole host of reasons for this, um, and there are some technical reasons. Uh, I think the political economy reasons Justin was talking about, probably hold more important because the technical solution won't work unless the economy is right. Um, but when you're trying to analyze this further and look at the um, reason, what I would say is what to look at who's, who, who is really is using GDP, Ghana. When we compare GDP in K, we know that the Monetary Policy Committee will use it to make a particular decision every quarter. That quarterly GDP, the accuracy of that quarterly GDP is very important. And that the whole of the, the rest of the system, how it's designed, sort of hangs off that. I mean, there are other users, that one key user. Who is the key user in the country? Until you've answered that question, begin to understand. Uh, second question? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go uh, here. Okay, hello. My name is Katrin Rusner. I'm working for the German Development Corporation. And I have two questions or remarks. The first one is going to the first speaker who called us kind of part of the problem. <laughs> um, I was wondering, a very simple question. Did you get any positive um, reactions on your book from developing countries or so African country represent representatives. Uh, the background to this question is we've been working in Central Africa with tax administrations and I felt they would be really happy to have even at national level data on specific sectors or even GDP reliable data. Um, and then the second comment is to the third speaker, uh, just a very detailed thing. Um, when you try to associate um, participation in clubs and associations with GDP, have you thought about the explanation that uh, often associations or NGOs are kind of a self-employment measure? So that's maybe why it's not correlated with GDP. Uh, and one, more. one more question. Let's do Martin. Thanks. Uh, I have questions for both Morton and Justin. Um, Morton, um, I, I think it's really important to, to uh, do what you're doing, but it's a little bit frustrating. I, 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 I hope you also present this to policymakers, finance ministers, finance ministries, people making decisions about the funding of statistics officers. And I'm not awfully surprised that you're getting a, back, a, a, a backlash from stats officers. But uh, one question is, is why? Why do we see these, these, for example, long lags in implementing SNA? Or, um, they vary between countries, the uh, rebasing that you pointed to. Uh, and one obvious question would be, well, is it related to public resources? 
for the stats office, which should be public data. Is it the case? Is it just a matter of, of the finance ministry allocating more money to the stats office? Or is it something about what the stats office does? That would be a terrific question. If, you, if you've addressed that, uh, tell us a bit about it. Um, and another uh, suggestion is, um, you know, I think in this room we've mostly got micro-empirical economists, so essentially you was preaching to the converted that we were already either know this or think, oh, no surprise at all. Um, but uh, macroeconomists, growth empirics, you've got a whole literature, a thousand papers probably, running growth regressions on cross-country data. I'd love to know whether, there's correlate, whether there are correlations between these, these lags and so on, these quality measures, and the right-hand side variables of, of those growth regressions. And what sort of to learn about the structure of measurement error and the potential biases in this huge literature. Um, being a micro person, I'm probably inclined to believe there are such biases, and I'd love to have some more evidence on it. On Justin, uh, one quick comment. The, um, if you you'd be very careful about arguing that, that cost of basic needs, poverty lines, are price indices. Um, because you've got to remember that there's a non-food component in a CBN poverty line as it's typically calculated. And that non-food component is calibrated to an angle curve. And that angle curve is shifting over time for all kinds of reasons, changes in tastes, changes in activity levels, and so on. With the implication being that may maybe what you're seeing is that the adjustment using this, the CBN poverty lines is, is actually uh, overcompensating. The real poverty line is rising over time because of the shifts in the angle curves. I'm not saying that's, that's the case in, in Tanzania, but, but that would certainly be a possibility you'd want to um, be aware of. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, Morton and then move on to Justin, and then we'll do another round of questions. Now it's on. Thank you. That's a, quite a few questions, and thank you. They are very good questions, too. Uh, let me first think, uh, start by uh, the, the simplest one. Are there any positive reactions? Uh, yes, plenty. Uh, the kind of reactions I've gotten, and the, the political and public ones, are the ones which are coming from the directors of statistics. Uh, it, it's a quite different kind of story, the debates and the kind of encouragement I get privately and publicly from those who actually are involved in doing national accounts which do feel, uh, one of the things which implies on to the con question you asked, Martin, that they have been un under-prioritized in many ways. So, uh, so there's a lot of, of uh, positive uh, thing here as well. Uh, some are public, some are private. Uh, moreover, uh, there are many vested interests in terms of African Development Bank would very much like to see investment in business registers, etc., an updating of those across the region. They're happy about the news, but they also have to play the political game of not... Uh, of t uh, trying to be on the, the, same, the team of the right people. Uh, UNECA did invite me because they wanted an investment in national accounts as well. So there is a, uh, some positive reaction so forth now handling this. I hope one can do a free debate on it. Uh, there is two kinds of uh, uh, things you have to think about at the same time. One is the thinking about the National Statistical Office as an institution, uh, which has been if you think about it, uh, been in relative neglect as an institution compared across the road to the central bank, for instance, which has been secured legal independence, funding independence, and has high-rise buildings with computers. Any kind of survey could, could, could uh, show you this. The National Statistical Office, uh, by comparison, has been relatively underfunded and hit m less. And it's kind of, uh, for those who are interested in growth empirics, it's kind of puzzling, retrospectively, that IMF and the World Bank invested so much in reforms that were supposed to induce growth, while not at the, sa well, at the same time forgetting to put in a baseline estimation so that we could uh, anyhow reasonably think that we could, could measure this. Uh, then that's on, on the National Statistical Office, but there has also been a shift of funding, and this has been uh, uh, shown uh, uh, by many other studies as well, where there is a migration from economic statistics to social statistics. Now this is, has to do with other types of local incentives at the local ground, right? Uh, so that means that there is a lot of our data, some of it micro, some of it macro, on social data and so forth, uh, it has to be survey funded. So there is a classic mistake in the Millennium Development Goals agenda where we have the eight goals, the 18 indicators, and the 48 targets. We kind of forgot that this is 
might seem to us as administrative data, data that are available to governments on their day-to-day -day operations. It's not. It's survey data for these four countries we're looking into. So that means that you need expensive uh, data accesses. That means funding is coming into national statistical offices, but it's coming in a very particular form. It's coming ad hoc, and it's often coming as a per diem reward for data collection which is not what national accounts do, which is not what economic statistics do. They collect data within the administrative units have, have uh, and, and are, are uh, as any uh, national account specialist would tell you, is a, you know, a omnivore of different types of statistics. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, most national statistical offices are working more and more as a de facto uh, uh, data collection agency for hire than one is actually providing those kind of data that maybe not microeconomics needs, but states would like, uh, not only do we have a knowledge problem among the macroeconomists, uh, we do have a knowledge problem at the central banks, for instance, to address that question directly. One, it's a frustration uh, at Malawi, in, in Tanzania, uh, in Nigeria, expressed about this, that they cannot trust their own data coming out of the, the same place, because they know uh, that the statistics are not good enough to base their the, the decision. That's again related to that kind of shift in funding. I'm not saying that it's more important to have GDP statistics than informed mortality. I'm not making a uh, normative statement about what we should be counting or not be counting. I'm saying there will be a demand for data. The data supply, what matters is how that data is supplied and by, by methods and how it also then distorts the, the, the type of uh, facts we get. So then finally, then that means that we also need to think about very, very carefully about, for instance, things like we should only pay for results. And that's a very, very naive uh, type of, of uh, it, it does sound well technocratically, but it's extremely naive when you know actually how fragile these statistical systems are, which also the, the work of Justin, I think, shows. But I, I'll stop there, and I hope I touched uh, one, uh, one thing I forgot, endogeneity. So yes, there is a what you said, there is a, of course, a correlation between income and base year, uh, which, you could, which you could tease out. There is also, moreover, a, when you see a GDP on the time series, this is more apparent. Uh, you are seeing like a state, so it means that when you are in Tanzania, for instance, the informal economy is illegal, it is also not covered by formal accounts. When it becomes legal, it becomes included in the new informal sector accounts. So there's a lot of political economy, there's a lot of endogeneity. And one of the central messages in my book is that these are not facts, objective facts, but they need to be understood as, con as products, and therefore we need to understand the political economy in which they are embedded in order to use them and also understand how to produce them better in the future. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I mean, a quick response to Martin. Uh, thanks. I think, of course, you're right. I don't think the cost of basic needs poverty line is a perfect uh, CPI substitute. Um, and I'm trying to think through on my feet about if what's happening in Tanzania is food prices are rising rapidly. Um, I don't know if food as a whole is a given good. I don't know what's happening to the, the proportion spent on food, uh, but would have to look into that. Um, but while the CBN is an imperfect substitute for the CPI, I mean, in Tanzania's case, the CPI, apart from its theoretical disadvantages of not covering the rural areas, I mean, is just clearly wrong. And through the period of rapid food price inflation in 2007, 2008, 9 was was capped at 10 percent as a rule. Um, in, since that CPI series has been revised and and shifted, so. Uh, I don't think we have a perfect alternative, but I, I think this, the cost of basic needs poverty lines provide an interesting uh, independent measure of what's happening to, to prices. But I would, be, uh, I would be curious to get more advice for you, from you offline about what to do about the angle curve situation. Let's go quickly. Let's do uh, Finn and then the woman behind. Yeah. Maggie. Yeah. Finn is nice enough to let me go first. Organizer, um, at the risk of making enemies, I want to make two points. Um, first, first, um, there's an extraordinary, um, extraordinary amount of cross-country heterogeneity within Africa. And one of the things about Ghana and Nigeria that I find so weird is that, especially Ghana, they they supposedly have so much money. Speaking to this issue of public resources, but they have some of the worst data in Africa. And it's not. And 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 you take a country like Ethiopia, one of the poorest countries in Africa. And they have one of the best well-run statistical agencies in Africa. So, so there's a big puzzle there. 
And the second thing has to do with macro versus micro data. In, in Ghana and in Nigeria, the macro data and the micro data are equally as bad. <laughs> and um, in defense of some of the national accounts data, um, in a previous session where I showed some of my results using the DHS data, which people seem to think is, is, is good quality, I found very high correlations between the employment shares using national accounts data and employment shares using the DHS data. So I, I, I think, I mean, I, I do agree that there's a need for better quality data, but I think we need to be a little bit more careful about saying Africa has bad data. Thank you. Um, I, I, I kind of have a couple of observations. I mean, uh, but let me first make a small advertisement. Jeff Round has actually, for wider, written a very insightful working paper on the situation of statistical offices in Africa. Those of you who really want a balanced insight from somebody who really has spent his whole prof career, profession, doing this, you might want to take a look at that. Now, the next point I want to make is that weaknesses of statistical offices is not just something that affects macro, national accounts data. I mean, that affects across the board. It's not just one part of the data collections that we are doing that's affected. Now, the, the, the second, oh, sorry, that was the third thing, which sort of kind of puzzles me. I mean, the, the title of the book is African Growth Miracle or Statistical Tragedy. Yeah, sure, no, but the paper. But, but, but the point is this. Uh, so are we supposed to think that there was no growth? Yeah, I have. But, but the basic point is just that the um, situation is that we are all trying to work with what is available at this moment. That doesn't mean that we take it as objective fact. That means that we approach it as economic analysis as analysts who try to look at these data from different perspectives. If you take the growth and poverty project that we have been implementing over the last three years, what we've been doing is we've been trying to bring different data sources, different observations together, and then try to tease out what's the story. So, I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, we, we, have, we are completely united. Statistical offices in Africa need very substantial upgrade, very substantial, and of course it would be great if Bill Gates would kind of start put some money into that, at least in some places where there are lack of resources. But, but, but that doesn't mean, as, as I understand it, that we can just basically sort of throw everything out. We need to do the very careful assessment and try then to sort of understand what we can use and what we cannot, under, uh, cannot use. And maybe as, as a slight comment to Martin, I mean, what basically comes out of trying to do what, what, what you just suggested should be done is that, yes, there's a lot of sort of stuff that, um, how can you say, uh, makes it problematic in the very short run. When, but when you look over the longer run, th then the things actually tend to be quite correlated. Thank you. We'll let the, the we have. Yeah, I, I, and, and that's partly, you're the host, but I still want to disagree with what you're just saying and, and, and ask, uh, ask to, to, to come comment on the issue of accountability. I don't think it is, it is quite that, that benign. Uh, I'm thinking of, of has the international community, when I think about DHS, have, have they contributed to creating parallel institutions uh, where they have, and, and, and that in itself is, is fine, but what has that done to the mainstream institutions, and have we, so, so my, example, my example is, is uh, 2000 PRSP Tanzania, my colleague in DFID, who said, oh, we need to do, uh, we need, you know, we need to support the household survey, and, and I think the, uh, the census was, was over 10 years old, and my instinctive reaction was, well, shouldn't we be doing first the census? That, that's a debatable point. But I was very unpopular when I asked it because the international community needed the household survey for, for the PRSP. Now, that potentially then is, is actively undermining the build-up of a local system that is needed to make the right decisions. And the research community 
that that analyzes the data is not is not the cause of the problem, but contributes to that. And and I would I would still say that it as research is still our responsibility to look at. In the end, if we're interested in development, and if we think that monetary committees are an important are an important uh, institution in, in a country, that we need to work harder to make sure that those institutions locally are supported and that the accountability is to the primary users, i.e. the people who potentially benefit from, from monetary policy and not an international community. I'm not saying anything out of the ordinary, that's simple Paris principles, but, but, but and, and that's in a way I want you to, to in way, where do you see, more to particular to ask, you know, where do you see a way forward in which, in which we can contribute to ensuring that there's an accountability in, in the building up of the institutions at a minimum that we don't, we avoid undermining them. Let's, uh, let's let um, uh, Morton and Justin, do you have final comments in 30 seconds to a minute? Uh, anything to, to, to want to finish off with or? Yeah, yeah. First of all, uh, yes, it is extremely obvious that there is heterogeneity uh, in GDP and quality of statistical offices. And indeed that my, I mean, I think that the tables I showed showed exactly that. Uh, it goes beyond that. That's just a surface kind of thing. And I think also that the, the kind of discrepancies you're, or what for you you said are maybe surprises is not so surprising from an economic history perspective. If you think about one of the things we are thinking about here is that lack of formal recording is also correlated more or less across the board with, with poverty. In Africa, the correlation is a bit different because also there has been a historical way of building states in Africa which has been less dependent on direct land titling, uh, uh, states that have been less dependent on direct taxation as well. Ethiopia is an outlier in this with, with both of these things that it stands out. Rwanda, Burundi as well. And there is also the, the southern, western Africa is also distinct in that sense. Hot taxes was widely collected in southern Africa where there is no hot taxes in southern of Nigeria or in Ghana, as you point out, which matches up very much with long-term credibility and learning by institutions. So these patterns can be very well explained and it's also part of what I touch upon in the book. Second, uh, I'm not saying, Finn, at all, not even close, that we should throw everything out. I'm saying exactly the opposite. And I'm, I'm encouraging you to, to listen carefully to that so you don't misunderstand that. I'm saying there is a knowledge problem. I'm saying we cannot throw out the GDP. There is a need for these aggregates, not only for as data users say on the knowledge side, there is a need for these aggregates on the policy level. And I think we need to think about uh, exactly that issue of accountability. And I th thinking about local demand for data and global demand for data. One of the things we have done, and that is ex this problem started to be bigger and bigger in the 1970s when national statistical offices were not able to deliver what the World Bank and the IMF was demanding of them and therefore often sidestepped the investing in the national statistical offices and did other types of quite quick fixes, negotiated numbers, or indeed collected alternative measures. And I think we need to think about, I think the way forward is to invest in local accountability. I think that they broadly, this is not only about GDP statistics, but the ability of the state to know something about themselves is quite important. The ability to conduct a population census, to know whether the population is 130 or 160 million does really matter for a lot of other policy variables. And therefore we need to think about uh, when we think about demanding these data, which we do, we need to think about how to invest in those sectors, uh, the supply of the data. I'm not suggesting to throw it all out as well. Uh, and Finn, I hope you, you don't misunderstand that. And I hope also statistis, statistical offices across the region is, is, is suggesting that, what my suggestion is that we need to pull them out of the relative neglect they've been for a couple of decades and think through this uh, very carefully once again. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much for a, a really stimulating session. I thought that was extremely interesting. Um, uh, we have the break. Oh, and then we have the poster session. Um, <coughs> please, please go. There will be seven doing in a row. They'll talk for about ten minutes each. You can listen to those presentations, or there will be speakers standing in front of their individual posters. Thank you. Thank you.